Question six we go. They say the reaction between steam and chlorine gas uh, reaches equilibrium in a closed container according to the following balanced equation. So there's our balanced equation and we note there that delta H is greater than zero. It is positive. Okay, they say is the reaction exothermic or, uh, exothermic or endothermic? So remember delta H greater than zero means that the forward reaction is endothermic, okay? And what this, uh, they say, give a reason for the answer. Uh, remember that the potential energy of the products must be greater than the reactants, or we can just simply say that uh, delta H is positive, right? So that is the reason why. Now, the next question, they say the graph below, not drawn to scale. Uh, shows how the products, the amount of products present in the container change with time at a specific temperature. The volume of the container is five cubic decimeters. Right, now notice in this case, we've got hydrochloric acid that seems to be decreasing at a rapid pace, right? And the amount of oxygen is decreasing, right? So if it is decreasing, hydrochloric acid is on the product side, then it's suggesting to us that we must then be favoring the reverse reaction, right? So they're asking which, uh, which reaction is favored. Choose from forward or reverse and give a reason for your answer. So it is definitely going to be the reverse reaction. Okay. And they said give a reason uh, because our products are decreasing uh, or the amount of products are decreasing okay right so that is uh, how we would answer that question there now they say how do the rates of the forward reaction and reverse reaction compare at t3 right so this is when we still have the um you know if we look at t3 there the graphs are actually parallel, or rather the amounts, or uh, definitely the graphs are parallel to each other. So this does suggest that we've reached a state of dynamic equilibrium. So we can say that they are equal. Okay. All right. So which means that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. All right. So let's go to the very next question. They say, oh, in fact, I didn't see that. Uh, they said write down only greater than, smaller than, or equal to. So it would definitely be equal to. Okay. Right. And then the next question, they say, um, calculate the equilibrium constant for this reaction, right, at uh, this temperature. If there, there was 5 grams of water and 5 grams of chlorine, right? So initially, we had 5 grams of water and 5 grams of chlorine. Now, ladies and gents, I'm going to try and draw the table over here. Okay, let's try and fill in the table as much as we possibly can. All right, so first of all, I'm given my initial values, right? So, okay, let's just try and fill in that table as much as possible. So I've got initial, that's in moles. I've got a change, that's also in moles. That's equilibrium, that's in moles, and that's equilibrium concentration. Right, and that's in moles per cubic decimeters. Please don't forget to write down the SI units. Right, so I've got 2H2O. I've got 2Cl2. I've got 4HCl. And I've got O2 over there. Now, ladies and gents, let's check. So initially, I started with 5 grams of water and five grams of chlorine, right? So I would calculate the number of moles of H2O. That's mass divided by molar mass. So that would be five 
divided by, remember water is H2O, so that would be 2 times 1, that's for hydrogen, plus oxygen, which is 16. So that would be 5 divided by 18. Okay, let's calculate. So that's 5 divided by... I get 0 0.28. Okay, so which means the initial moles of hydrogen, okay, would be 0, uh, of H2O rather, at 0 0.28. And I'll do the same for chlorine. So the number of moles of chlorine, Cl2, uh, would be mass, which is 5 grams, divided by, now remember chlorine is 35.5, but you've got Cl2, right? So remember you multiply by that number at the bottom there. So this would be 2 times 35.5, okay? Right, so let's calculate that. So that's 5 divided by 2 times 35.5. I get 0 0.07. So the initial number of chlorine is 0 0.07. Now remember initially, this suggests to us that we did not have any amount of... Uh, you know, hydro, uh, 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 hydrogen chloride, okay, um, as well as oxygen, right? This was what happened initially in the reaction, right? Now, what we're going to do there is I'm going to assume that the amount of hydrogen chloride and water, I mean, and oxygen rather, uh, would be uh, zero, okay? Uh, in fact, no, actually, that's not true uh, because in our graph, sorry about that, our graph seems to suggest that we started with a known amount of hydrogen chloride, which was one mole of hydrogen chloride. Apologies there, so we can assume it to be one. Okay. All right, so... That would be one mole. But the amount of hydrogen, uh, of oxygen is 0 0.3. So I would have started there with 0 0.3 moles. Right, now, the reaction occurred or rather uh, proceeded as it did. Okay, and we do reach a certain amount of equilibrium. Now, what I notice is that at equilibrium, the amount of oxygen is 0 0.1. So this says to me, at equilibrium, I ended up with 0 0.1. Now, please, I want you to notice, ladies and gents, because we are favoring the reverse reaction, I am now going to, now note in this case, it means I'm going to produce reactants, okay? it means I am going to lose products. So I would have started with 0 0.3, right? And at the end, I've got 0 0.1. So how much did I lose of oxygen? That's 0 0.2, right? Now to get the values of uh, the others, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my ratios, okay? So I'm going to say, Right, so remember that we use the ratios uh, here for the change in moles. In fact, let me just use a different color there. So I'm going to use my ratio. I'm going to say for every one mole of oxygen, I am going to have four of hydrochloric acid, right? So for every one, there's four. So uh, for 0 0.2, what is four times that? That will be 0 0.2. Eight, okay and again i'll do the same for chlorine for every one there's two times of chlorine so for 0 0.2 uh, twice of that would be 0 0.4 and the same is two is true for h2o uh, twice of it will also be 0 0.4 okay so that is important ladies and gents now let's fill in the rest of this table okay so now we know we started with one mole of hydrogen chloride. 
we used 0 0.8, what do we have at the end? It would be 0 0.2. And now remember the reactants we produced, more of it. I started with 0 0.07. I produced 0 0.4, so what do I have at the end? It would be 0 0.47. And that's the same for H2O. I started with 0 0.28. I produced 0 0.4. And so at the end, I've got 0 0.68. Okay, so uh, please, I want you to note that. Okay, I'm trying to get this guy to work. Uh, 0 0.68. Right, now, remember we were given the volume there. They said it is 5 cubic centimeters, uh, decimeters. So to get the concentration, I am going to take the number of moles at equilibrium, 0 0.68, divide by 5. So I'm going to find each of them, 0 0.68, divide by 5. So that will be 0 0.136 for chlorine. 0 0.47 divided by 5, that gives me 0 0.094. For hydrogen chloride, I've got 0 0.2 divided by 5, I get 0 0.04. And for oxygen, Right, I've got 0 0.1 divided by 5. That should give us 0 0.02. Okay, right. So what did they ask us to find there? They had said we must calculate uh, the value of Kc. Now remember, in as much as we favored the reverse reaction, Kc still follows the reaction. It says hydrochloric acid is our product. So that's the concentration of our product to the exponent 4. That's oxygen divided by our reactants. That's H2O squared multiplied by Cl2. And this is also going to be squared. Right, and all that's left for us to do, ladies and gents, is just to substitute. So that's 0 0.04 exponent 4, 0 0.02, okay, exponent 1, divided by 0 0.136, that's squared, and 0 0.094. That is also squared. And all that's left for us to do is to put in some calculator work. So I've got 0 0.04. Um, that's yx4. Okay, I'm going to multiply that by 0 0.02. And at the bottom, I've got 0 0.136. That would be squared multiplied by 0 0.094 and that's also squared ladies and gents i get a very small uh, kc value uh, for obvious reasons so i get 3.13 times 10 to the negative 4 right and please remember that kc does not have any units at this stage right so uh, that is how we are going to answer that question all right so now let's go to the next uh, part of this okay um, so they say to us the pressure is now increased okay how will this change and by the way please remember i added all of them in my kc expression because they are all in gaseous form please don't forget that if it is not a guess we do not include it in the expression. Right, so they say the pressure is now increased, right? How will this change affect the value of the equilibrium constant? Now, remember, ladies and gents, when I look at pressure, 
I need to always check how many moles of gases we have on either side. So we've got two here, got another two, got four moles over there. And on the right hand side, I've got four plus one, which would be five moles. Right. And now we want to know what's going to happen. Uh, to the amount there so they say to us we are now going to increase the pressure remember that an increase in pressure will favor the side with the least amount of moles right so in this case um oh actually they said how will this affect the value of the equilibrium constant remember that equilibrium constant would remain the same the only thing that changes the equilibrium constant would be temperature okay so in that case i want you to please note uh, that it would remain the same um, they say uh, give a reason for the answer remember that uh, it is only temperature uh, that changes uh, the kc value okay right and then finally, they say the reaction is repeated with a catalyst. Okay, draw a potential energy graph diagram uh, of this reaction and indicate the non-catalyzed reaction, which is B, and the catalyzed reaction on the same axis. Right, uh, let's see where I can grapple for some space there. Okay, so let's try and draw it over there. Okay. Now remember for reaction A, um, we are going to have, uh, this is an endothermic reaction, you must remember, uh, keep that in mind, delta H was positive, so that tells us we're going to start with the lower value and end up with the higher value at the products uh, side. Please don't forget to also, so this would be graph um, the non-catalyzed one is B so this would be B now what would be the graph that is catalyzed look like it would be exactly the same only right the peak would be somewhat lower so this graph here would be graph A okay and please don't forget to label your axes Right, so this would be potential energy. Okay, and in this case, this is against reaction coordinates, right? Or you can say the cost of the reaction. I think that's the more popular one, uh, cost of reaction. Right, so those are the two graphs that you have. Please remember that the graph with a catalyst would always have a lower peak in that case. Ladies and gents, that brings us to the end of question six. Let's go on to the next one.